fifth so now let's cover out the law of the sea so the big daddy of international law this is the topic so mayor liberum all right so mayor liberum is actually means open sea as well so kabhi kabhi law entrances mein pehle mcq aa jata tha mayor liberum ka matlab hota hai it's open seas so but when you're writing an answer so it's freedom basically it means freedom of the seas first placed on legal basis in 1604 by hugo grotius so mayor liberum the main work was given by hugo grotius but the work titled mayor liberum was published in 1609 but you know they he basically announced his work in 1604 but some argue that spanish theologians earlier worked on this basically they gave the hypothesis and grotius just stole it away from them but really we won't get into that controversy so historically no one laid claim to the ocean now mayor liberum mayor clausum ye do jo funde hain inki story bahut hi awal darje ki you can say entertainment value story All right, so this is basically in which we just have to prepare our notes accordingly for a short, short answer on this. Historically, no one laid claim to the oceans. Only interested, basically, the rulers were only interested in land, at least in Asia. This enabled Portugal. So when when I say that, well, nobody's nobody was uh, nobody laid claim to the oceans. That means no country was really interested because at that time, the technology wasn't there. Back in the 16th, 17th century, the transport methods weren't really all that great. the sea was full of dangers itni zyada light ki uplabdhi nahi thi and darkness plus water is a very dangerous scenario so people the rulers were only interested in ruling the land not really bothered about the ocean so this enabled portugal to navigate freely with armed ships and they controlled or they basically gained control over the the spice trade and they made enormous profits now to to contest their claims over the seas because they were the only ones doing it so they pretty much had almost like a monopoly and other nations weren't really happy all right so to counter their claim over the sea grotius came up with this work called mayor liberum grotius theory aimed at upholding the dutch the the rights of the dutch to navigate in commerce with indians basically sara kaam india ka hi tha india tak pahunchna tha aur spice trade pe kabza hasil karna tha but since the portuguese had dominated the trade well the dutch wanted a part of the trade and the dutch wanted to to monopolize it so inhone ek moral ethical drama jo shuru kara via grotius right which was that the sea ought to be free mayor liberum all right so keep this in mind ki grotius bhai apna kaam lekar aaye the sea ought to be free that is the open sea that is mayor liberum just for this trade now watch what happens all right it's a very very um very interesting thing but two propositions mainly of mayor liberum is all property the general general mein property ki baat kar rahe hain is grounded by occupation it's immovable is enclosed movable ko aap seize kar sakte hain immovable ko aap enclose kar sakte hain so whatever therefore cannot be seized or enclosed is incapable of being seized or enclosed that it cannot be a property bhai jis cheez ko aap na seize kar sakte hain na enclose kar sakte hain how can it be a property how can you pretty much occupy it so waters of the ocean well they are free and right of occupation rests on the fact that most things exhaust on a long use on a continuous use so this was not the case with sea so it cannot be exhausted either by navigation or finding well this work was mainly aimed at defeating the portuguese monopoly that ki nahi nahi sea should be free you know it is common heritage of mankind all they wanted was to guilt trip the portuguese into giving up that trade thoda sa international pressure unpe aaye so once done once this was done ki nahi nahi the you know it's you you just cannot gain control over the sea once done the the dutch they seized the trade by defeating portuguese and they sought to create their own monopolies so now the portuguese have been defeated by the dutch and the dutch are now seeking to create their own monopolies lekin like theory kon lekar aaya tha a dutchman right dutch ke liye aayi thi hugo grotius so grotius conveniently forgot his freedom of seas principle and went to england in 1613 to uphold the dutch monopoly wahan pe ladai ho gayi तो वो गए थे समझाने की देखिए अब तो हमारे पास ही कंट्रोल है तो हम ही करेंगे सो हिज ओन बुक वॉज कोटेड बाय द ब्रिटिश अगेंस्ट हिम इज क्वाइट टेकन अवे बैक बाय दिस सो द ब्रिटिश कोटेड ग्रोटियस इज ओन वर्क अभी तो तुम कह रहे थे फ्रीडम ऑफ द सीज होना चाहिए भाई मेरे और अभी तुम आगे कह रहे हो कि नहीं वो डच मोनोपली होनी चाहिए ये काम तुमने शुरू करा था टू डिफीट द पोर्चुगीज थोड़ा सा वो कह रहे थे मिस्टेक हो गया है ना <laughs> तो उसके अंदर आप कॉमेडी शो देखिए जो वहाँ पे लगा हुआ है तो दिस इज प्रिटी मच हाउ लॉ वर्क एज वेल एवरी वन जस्ट लुक्स आउट फॉर देयर ओन इंटरेस्ट देन केम दी वर्क मेयर क्लॉजम क्लॉजम मीन्स सी अंडर जूरिस्डिक्शन राइट सो दिस वॉज जॉन सेल्डन्स वर्क नाउ दिस इज ऑल्सो वेरी फ्रीक्वेंट एम सी लॉ एंड्रेंस दिस इज जॉन सेल्डन्स वर्क तो यहाँ पे आपका सी अंडर जूरिस्डिक्शन 
this basically this work temporarily defeated the Avga, temporarily uh, defeated yeah, Grotius Kakam. So it was a reply to Grotius work. It was the right of crown to waters around the Great Britain and the sea, the high sea was of public. That is what it says that we have certain jurisdiction around our coastline. Baki tum jano high sea mein tum log kya kar. So this was basically the public, the, the sea was public property of UK but common to peaceful traders and navigation. Matlab aap, if you are peaceful, if you are like a peaceful ship, go ahead, navigate the waters. We don't care. But it is the public property of UK. All right. So, but the industrial revolution took place. So, more and more nations wanted to explore. So, Selden's work became redundant and monopoly of trade and seas basically died. And Grotius, again, after 200 years, again became a hero that seas should be free. No one should have control. We can do as much trade in the sea as we want to. So, chief's purpose of Aapka jo freedom of sea jo tha, jo ab jo hua after the industrial revolution took place because now the ships were being constructed the transport was lot more speedier so lot many nations wanted to explore more ki dunya mein aur kya kya hai aur hum kya kya resource kar sakte so this was primarily for joint exploitation of asian and african nations by the europeans but then colonialism collapsed it started collapsing and then hamara bhi freedom movement independence movements chalu ho gayi now asian and african uh, countries uh, ye jo, they wanted national jurisdiction over national waters ki bhai zyada tar koi asani se entry lena pahe. and then science and technology had also evolved and science and technology also declared ki matlab science and technology ke dwara pata chala that there is nine times more vegetation under the sea as compared to land and then there are mineral sources there are hydrocarbon sources there are fishing and fishing is possible even now in the high seas thanks to the technological advances then came the Truman declaration of 28th September 1945 answer mein mention karke hi aana hai. So this is doctrine of freedom of sea got a setback by President Harry Truman who was the president back then of the United States of America. He proclaimed natural resources of seabed and subsoil of continental shelf beneath high seas. Basically he wanted he basically jo aapka jo sea jo aapki uh, seabed hai and subsoil hai of the continental shelf beneath the high seas but contiguous to US coastline belong to the US and this is basically yahan pe contiguous ka matlab kya hota hai contiguous jab jab mai use karun so this is in contact with something right next to each other is contiguous all right so this led to chaos claims of extended maritime jurisdiction all right so some latin american countries wanted 200 nautical miles bhai US ne shuru kara so the Truman declaration started this claim ki bhai ye to hamara maal hai sara जो आपका ये वाला जो सामान है जो कॉन्टिनेंटल शेल्फ पे पड़ा हुआ है सब सॉइल पे पड़ा है सी बेड पे पड़ा है सब कुछ हमारा है तो इनको देख के द अदर नेशंस दे वेंट इनटू केयर्स कि भाई हमें भी चाहिए क्योंकि इसमें मतलब ही इज नॉट द यूएस इज नॉट समथिंग एक्स्ट्रा स्पेशल नो देयरफॉर वी हैड टू कन्वीन द यूएन कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑफ लॉ ऑफ द सी व्हेनेवर यू आर राइटिंग राइटिंग एन आंसर ऑन दिस देयर इज नो वे ऑन हेल्थ दैट यू कैन नॉट मेंशन मेयर लिबेरम एंड मेयर क्लॉजम की हिस्ट्री व्हिच लेड टू दिस ऑलराइट this has to be mentioned otherwise the answer cannot fit in all right so the first un conference on law of the sea resulted in conclusion of four geneva conventions of 1958 so the conference was chalti rahegi till the time that you know it becomes a full fledged thing then second un conference in 1960 it was held to decide the limit of territorial sea but no conclusion was pretty much reached and during 1960s technology even further advanced all right so radar and you know sonars everything else was advancing light zyada zyada badhti chali ja rahi thi the ships became much more powerful it came to be known that beyond continental margin there is extensive mineral resources of manganese uh, modules man m a n g a n e s e modules so these were very highly useful for industrial economies as they contain nickel they contain copper they contain a lot more all right then uh, pardo proposal now pardo proposal is p a r d o Proposal in 1967 was given by Arvid, A-R-V-I-D, Arvid, yeah, Ar Arvid, 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 Arvid Pardo of Malta. He informed the United Nations General Assembly of tremendous wealth of oceans. He suggested need for creation of an effective international regime for seabed and ocean floor beyond national jurisdiction, which, which is basically he wanted it to be labeled as common heritage. So UNGA accepted the Pardo proposal. And ek, you know, a seabed committee bana di. And seabed committee, well, they wanted to, they started preparing for a third UN conference on law of the seas. All right. Which basically now we reached the resolution. This is common heritage of mankind. 
द जनरल असेंबली रेजोल्यूशन ऑफ नाइनटीन सेवेंटी रेजोल्यूशन नंबर टू सेवन फोर नाइन याद रह जाए तो आंसर में जरूर यह नंबर लिख दीजिएगा दिस इज सी बेड बियॉन्ड नेशनल जोरिस्डिक्शन वॉज नॉट सब्जेक्ट टू नेशनल अप्रोप्रिएशन इट वॉज कॉमन हेरिटेज ऑफ मैन काइंड मैं अभी जरा आपको ये सब कुछ समझाने वाला हूँ कि ये नेशनल जोरिस्डिक्शन सी बेड वी बेड कॉन्टिनेंटल शेल्फ यही सारा हमने अभी आगे काम करना है लेकिन अभी के लिए जरा हम नोट बना लें फटाफट common heritage and interest of developing countries have to be looked into while keeping these basically while formality if any country makes any laws you have to uh, keep the interest of developing countries you will have to look into them aur ye common heritage hai basically jo seabed beyond national jurisdiction hai was not subject to national appropriation matlab ye aapka aapke pita ji ka raj yahan par nahi hai the seabed beyond the national jurisdiction abhi national jurisdiction hai kya aur wo mudda udh jata hai Finally, we reached into UN Clause Three, that is United Nations Con Conference on Law of the Seas Three. So this is, हम पूरी दुनिया अब state of chaos में. Truman Declaration के बाद everyone wanted कि भाई मेरा तो ज़्यादा ज़्यादा territorial sea हो, मेरे ज़्यादा ज़्यादा national jurisdiction हो, और उन clause पे भी ज़्यादा कोई मतलब agreement आ नहीं रहा था. So every country wanted more and more resources as to them. कि जी जो भी ocean लगता है ओशन की जब ऐसे आप इसको डेटामाइन कैसे करेंगे एंड दैट इज द मेन इशू कि आप कहाँ तक आपका कंट्रोल होना चाहिए नदी के अंदर सो दे वर कॉन्फ्लिक्टिंग क्लेम द पार्डो इनिशिएटिव वेल इट गेव बर्थ टू द टू द सी बैट कमिटी एंड बेसिकली पार्डो इनिशिएटिव से लॉ ऑफ द सी आया था लॉ ऑफ द सी कन्वेंशन इज कॉल्ड ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज अ पैकेज डील और राइट सो दिस इज दिस इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट डिटेल द लॉ ऑफ द सी कन्वेंशन इज कॉल्ड अ पैकेज डील इट्स आइदर एक्सेप्ट ऑल और नन देर इज नो पार्शल सोल्यूशन हेयर और देर इज नो पार्शल एक्सेप्टेंस Conference began work in 1974 at Caracas in Venezuela, and groups emerged. So certain groups emerged in this in this entire episode. That was coastal states, marginers, margin मतलब जिनके broad continental margin थे. Territorialists, that was 200 mile territorial sea. कि territorialists की मतलब we want 200 nautical miles of territorial sea. They were advocating for that. There were strait states जिनके border पे straits थे. And straits पे अभी हमने आना Corfu Channel case पे. And then there is group of five. that was also known as gang of five which was uk us soviet union france japan who wanted as per their own women fancy so finally finally we adopted the unclos 3 on 10th december 1982 it comes into force humne yahan pe condition rakhi thi ki it comes into force 12 months post the 60th instrument of accession and ratification aur yahan pe aapka guyana jo hai unhone desh that they gave the 60th instrument of ratification and they gave it on 16th november 1993 so finally this became fully active this became a binding this was 16 november 1994 12 mahine ka but ye guyana likh lenge on 10 december 1982 the adoption date aur waise 10 december ko hum kya manate hain international human rights day okay so article 297 indian constitutional position on this is article 297 is zara dekhenge bare art agar khol sakte hain to khol lijiye 297 ko things of value within territorial water continental shelf and resources of the exclusive economic zone to west in the union all lands minerals and other things of value underlying the ocean within territorial waters or the continental shelf or the exclusive economic zone of india shall west in the union and be held for the purposes of the union ye bahut zyada zaruri hai and uh, i think now let us try to define what territorial sea aur yahan pe sari ladai kaise hui but is lecture mein se jo most important hai mayor liberum mayor clausum ki history वो नहीं बोल सकते द पार्डो प्रपोजल है पार्डो प्रपोजल के बाद आपके ये लॉ ऑफ द सी के अंदर हमने जो काम करा है और अब इससे क्या क्या डेफिनेशन निकल कर आई हैं टू कीप इट ऑर्गेनाइज्ड आई एल टीच यू द टेरिटोरियल सी इन दिस लेक्चर ठीक है